beyond the course titles of Earth, Space, Science, and Biology, I have some bottles to show you that will illustrate the differences. If you take Earth, Space, Science, you will understand by the end why when I squeeze this bottle, our little artesian diver goes up and down. And you will understand why when I shake this bottle, these things settle into layers. But more than that, you're gonna understand how the knowledge of what's happening here applies to earthquakes and our weather. If you take biology, it's a life science class that's gonna focus on our biosphere, the world we live in, and yourself and you will learn the factors that determine the success of a biosphere by building your own. And that will be something you do in the fall and you will have to monitor and you're gonna decide what you put in the bottle and monitor the health of that bottle over time. You'll also learn other things in both classes. These are just sample activities. Great question. Both are UC approved laboratory courses that will not change your eligibility for any AP or science elective course you want to take at Los Gatos High. What you should be aware of is we've put together a, a comparison of the three courses with a little bit more details. So you can access that on the Los Gatos website as well as the full science course sequence. And all that we are doing is asking you to follow a sequence that honors the, the content you'll need to go to a UC and a CSU or any other college you desire. In terms of how the classes are structured, we, Earth Space Science is a survey course, so you're gonna do a lot of topics, and biology is, as the title says, just a life science course where you're gonna go deeper into that topic of biology. Um, but regardless, the other thing to keep in mind is that ESS will move at a little bit slower pace than biology, which moves pretty quickly. The first question you have to ask yourself is, do you have a passion for science? If you are passionate about biology, that's number one. Number two, are you somebody, when you've been in lab groups in the past, you're the leader in the lab group, or were you a follower? When you've been in science classes before, do you need a review session with the teacher before you take the test? Do you appreciate that? Then that's probably telling you that if you need a review, and maybe you weren't the leader in the lab group, you should probably take regular bio versus honors bio. The other thing to keep in mind, if you take regular bio and honors bio, you build a biosphere. For regular bio, you write a report, but it's not as detailed as it will be asked for you out of honors bio. And in honors bio, you expect to use all of your tutorial and outside of time to get the data you need to write that report. The biospheres in the fall, in the spring, you learn to cultivate fruit flies, and you do genetic crosses, and you write another big report. These crosses happen in the evening. You go to fly parties, they're after school, they're during tutorials. So if you have a lot of activities that compete for your time, even if you love science, you may not want to be in honors bio because it does require a lot of time for me. The Honors Biology Assessment is designed to give you a taste of the challenges you would face in Honors Bio. And that means that the questions are critical thinking questions where you're given information in the question and you have to read through it and find the answer. We absolutely do not want you to study for it. There is no magical score that determines whether you get in or not. There is a recommended score for you to use in addition to all that other information you need to decide on whether to take Honors Bio or not. So we do want you to take the assessment so you're informed. say there are five main differences between English 9 and English 9 honors. Uh, the amount of reading, the amount of writing, the level of expectations for the writing assignments, the depth of discussions, and the number of vocabulary words. Both courses are college prep, so you're going to learn basic English skills in either class. You're going to learn reading, writing, speaking, listening, research skills. But in English 9H, you're, uh, it's designed to push you to a deeper level and requires that you do more of that work on your own with less scaffolding and a much faster pace. 
Um, in addition to the core freshman texts, the English 9 honor students are required to read 1,500 pages of outside reading per semester, and they typically report on those books in analytical ways, whereas in English 9, Students do have required outside reading, but they might be reporting in more personal, subjective, artistic ways, as well as some written responses. Um, honor students are expected to have already pretty strong essay writing skills and reading comprehension skills. So we jump right into the higher level reading quizzes, to critical thinking questions, to essay topics, and in-depth discussions in which students are expected to participate as part of their grade. Uh, both classes require homework, but whereas in an English 9 class you might have 20 to 30 minutes of homework per night, in English 9 honors it's more typical to have 45 to 60 minutes, and that will involve some of the long-term projects like outside reading and things like that, that you have to keep those long-term deadlines in mind. Um, and that requires pacing and organizational skills. So in order to be successful in English 9 Honors, you really have to have a strong work ethic. If your study habits are lacking or if you find that you have a hard time getting organized, then Honors is going to be a real challenge. For English Honors, think of this question, do you want to learn to improve your reading and writing skills or are you simply interested in getting an A in English? If you love reading, if you enjoy writing, if you treasure collaborating with other people who love literature and you want to challenge yourself at a higher level, we'd love to have you join us. We want you to challenge yourself. It's important to, to push your boundaries and to do your best. And mental health is important. And the transition from middle school to high school uh, comes with a lot of new responsibilities, new challenges that can feel overwhelming. Part of the problem with signing up for nine honors, if you're not entirely sure that you want to take it, is that changing your course can mean reshuffling all of your other classes. If you're still on the fence, you can take the optional Diagnostic Writing Assessment 345, March 19th, at the Los Gatos High School Library. The English 9 Honors teachers work together to score that assessment, and we can give you some feedback that might push you in one direction or the other based on what we see in your writing. There are some questions that we think it's really helpful to ask yourself if you're trying to decide which class is for you. First, did you get A's in your 7th and 8th grade English classes? Are you a pretty strong English student already? Do you love reading and do you enjoy analyzing books for deeper meanings? Are you a strong writer who earned A's on most of your 8th grade essays? Are you a critical thinker who likes to challenge yourself to think about new ideas in a new way? Uh, do you like to share your ideas in class discussions, since discussion is such an important part of the class? Do you possess good organizational skills and a strong work ethic? Do you get your assignments done on time? Do you complete your work for your classes? And then can you balance a heavy course load with your outside activities? If you're involved in a lot of extracurricular activities that can be difficult sometimes to fit in the time needed to succeed in English 9 Honors. And finally, is English a subject you enjoy? You're going to be putting extra time into this. We want it to be a class that you enjoy. We want you to challenge yourself, but not overwhelm yourself. High school math is different than middle school math. In high school, homework is worth a very small percentage of your grade, although it's critical for success. You should not expect test retakes or corrections, so you need to be prepared to show content mastery on the scheduled test date. Set yourself up for an attainable challenge, and don't be afraid to ask your teachers for help or clarification during class or tutorial. All of our P-level math classes offered to freshmen are part of a pathway to college eligibility. Students need to complete at least Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 to be UC eligible. Even if you take Algebra A, Algebra B, Geometry, and then Algebra 2, you're still eligible to apply to college. It's more important to choose a math class that is appropriate to your skill set as it exists now so that you can build a strong foundation than it is to rush into a challenging math class that you aren't ready for.
The amount of homework can vary depending on the level of a class or even within a class depending on the day, so it's hard to say how much homework to anticipate, but you should expect homework every day. Okay, if you're currently in Math ATC, Algebra Readiness, or a similar course at a different school, you have two choices for next year. You can take the one-year Algebra 1 course or the two-year Algebra 1 course, which is called Algebra A and Algebra B. In the end, you'll learn the same content from both courses, but the two-year course allows students more time to learn the concepts before moving on, and it also allows more time to review, to fill in any gaps that the students may come to us with. We recommend the two-year course if you are receiving a C or below this year in your eighth grade math class. If you're currently in Algebra 1, we want to make sure you have a strong grasp of the content before you move on to geometry. In looking at data, we're finding that students who earned a B or lower in middle school Algebra 1 and did not do any summer work to address the gaps are really struggling when they get to Algebra 2 Accelerated. If you're currently in geometry, please do an honest reflection of your algebra skills. The pathway for you is to take Algebra 2 Accelerated next year, but if you earned a B or lower in any of the semesters of Algebra 1 or Geometry, past trends indicate your likelihood of success in that course will be much greater if you do some summer work to address those gaps before you start here next year. This is the most asked question by incoming families. Technically, you are allowed to take a course over the summer, but it is highly, highly discouraged. Um, I've been looking at a lot of data from the last three years to help advise students. Of the students, for one example, who chose to accelerate by taking geometry over the summer, only 13% of those students received an A in the first semester of Algebra 2 Accelerated. 62% received a C, D, or F in Algebra 2 Accelerated, which means they are not recommended for trig pre-calc honors the following year, and 22% moved to Algebra 2 before second semester began. Please don't feel like you need to accelerate over the summer by taking a math class. You will be better off in the long run by taking a year-long math class to build a strong foundation that your future classes can rely on. The pathway from Trig Precalc Honors to AP Calculus BC is now open if you meet the requirements. That means if you are taking Geometry at Las Gatas High School next year, you can still make it to Calculus BC your senior year if you meet the requirements that show that you're ready for it. So there's really no rush. So I think a second language um, shows people more opportunities to learn and be more accepting of different cultures. Um, there are three different languages that our school offers, Spanish, um, French, and Japanese. And all three of those have different aspects which can help to immerse um, students in their language of choice. Um, besides being a great opportunity to immerse yourself in culture and learn more about the world as a whole, it's a really good opportunity to advance yourself because knowing how other cultures work and what others are saying is really empowering and it can help you, uh, you know, move ahead in life, but it's also just really exciting to learn and experience and just feel more knowledgeable and more connected to the world. So I'm taking Japanese and I think what makes Japanese such a great course to take is it's a smaller program than the other languages. So you get a more intimate setting and you get to build a really strong community, especially in the higher levels of Japanese, which just makes for a really exciting learning environment. I'm taking Spanish and the thing I like about my language is that I can take what I learn in the class and apply it to, to, what, to my everyday life and even at home and especially when I travel, and uh, yeah. I'm taking French. Um, my favorite part about that class is our this discussions we have, um, especially because the program has been going on since about, you can opt in in seventh grade. A lot of the people that make it to five have been in the same class with since seventh grade. It's kind of like the breakfast club.
Um, we learn about different cultures and I really like that. I also find that language classes are more collaborative than my other classes. Yeah, in French, or in a lot of other classes at high school, you get to talk about Western culture and American culture. But what's great about French class is you get to talk about uh, Polynesia and Africa and Europe, and you get to talk about topics and issues relating to those places, um, and you're doing it in a different language, which is great. The, the cult, uh, Japanese culture is developed really differently from uh, Western culture, and then it's also a lot more interesting and unique. Uh, Japanese culture, you have to learn a whole new set of alphabet. There's actually three of them. Uh, that's, that's a big part of what you learn in your first year. And then you also get to have a lot of projects to help you learn better. And then, uh, someone said this earlier, but your class culture is also very different because the Japanese program is a little bit more intimate, which means you get to know and work with people um, if you take it your freshman year, all four years. Okay, so I think one of the main highlights from taking Japanese has definitely been the times that we've done cooking in class because it's really fun for us to just be able to make dishes from Japanese culture and it seems like everyone in the class seems to have a really fun time just uh, cooking. Yeah, for French fr class, uh, crepe parties are great, but also we get to watch a lot of great movies too. Um, some of the highlights of Spanish class um, was definitely the salsa competition. I think I had so much fun with that, where it was basically a competition to make the best salsa. And um, also, when we were dancing in class, I think that was pretty fun because like that took the stress out of the day, and we were able to just, uh, just shake it off. I would recommend taking a second language because it's very fun and the experience is great. You can also go travel to other places and even though it's nice like looking at other places, you can actually talk in it and get to know people, make friends. Uh, taking a second language allows you to like experience like even more culturally differences. So I take Japanese and I get to explore lots of different aspects of that culture and I think if you take even more languages, you can experience like in contrast both of those. I think that's a really cool opportunity. And also if you start as a freshman, you can, you're with people your age. So if you start later, then you are not likely to be with anyone you know. Um, I recommend taking a second language your freshman year, especially because, um, like I previously mentioned, you're with people your age. And if you start freshman year, then you can progress through I think to like the language and before you know it, what does it mean to be a, a lead student? What is it? I think to be a lead student, it's, it's more than just like grades. Comfortable talking with one another and communicating. Leadership. Problem solvers. Developing your way of learning. Share each other's ideas. Talking to new people. Pushing the boundaries of what can be done. It, you build upon others and yourself. Learning how to work with people. It's learning to think outside the box. I'm hyped, let's go. School is often very constructed and Everyone does everything the same way, and LEAD was an opportunity to think and do things and learn differently. And I think overall, when I go out into the workforce, I'm going to have a lot of skill sets that a lot of people were never able to gain or have access to at a young age. I've been in the same classes with these the kids my almost my whole high school life, so I kind of get to know them a little bit more in depth. LEAD has taught me how to uh, seek out group work and how to find my abilities in using that in college. The ability I had to work with my teachers more closely than any other classroom that I had outside of LEAD. I think I've built a lot of my relationships off other students in LEAD and I think I've, I've built good relationships that help me in like times that I need help and I help others when they need help. We're team focused and uh, I think that really helps when we're doing group projects is 
uh, like we're all in this together and we're all gonna try and like help each other out. Lead students are students that want to take control of their own learning and that they have their own passion and their own interests and they don't want to learn in the cookie cutter way. They want to uh, be able to define for themselves what's important. I think the most useful thing I learned was leadership and to know how to do that in a productive and effective way is really important. Public speaking aspect, get more comfortable speaking in front of people. I think I got better at presenting public speaking and speaking in front of other people. Freshman year, we did a service learning project and we got to go to like a shelter in San Jose and we got to volunteer there and go there during English class and it was a really cool experience. I end the first semester and I have students do a project where they interview a person of inspiration and um, I connect it to StoryCorps which is an NPR radio show. I had a student a few years ago who interviewed her grandfather who was over 100 years old and she actually went to San Francisco and interviewed him in the StoryCorps recording booth that would be held in the Library of Congress forever. It was project-based learning and that's how I learned best. I also liked that it was going to be more hands-on and less textbooky. You know, be willing to go outside of your comfort zone, do more projects. And... As a senior and looking back at my high school career, I have some of my best memories in this program that I know a lot of kids didn't get, and I think that's really special. Classes with familiar faces that you'll see every day is just like the most comforting thing. It's a lot of fun, it, it really is. Uh, lead is just like family. I think it's, it's a family. It's your family you choose.